Welcome back to the Phasing Line Podcast. My name is Marty Sullaway, KC1CWF, and on the Skype line, as always, is my fearling co-host... In Zero SOC, who's having a cold one with the boys, a cold LaCroix, that is, sparkling water, because we're... LaCroix is we great are, stuff, I gotta we are, say. Um, you know, adults on this podcast who cater to a wide audience, so here's to, here's to our wide audience. I'm verifying <laughs> it's actually LaCroix. Um, so we're back. Can you imagine this? We are... Putting out a show with less than a month and a half between episodes. Today is the 14th of August. It's a yeah. Monday. It's about 722 it's because, Eastern, 622 it's because, Central. It's because I've been so, like, i just not been podcasting. I have to catch up. You know, we're, we're so behind schedule here, and, and we just need to Actually, overtime. you know why we're doing this? You know why, why we're why? doing this? Because we care about you. Oh, thank you. But you know what would make us care even more? What? Go, go give our Patreon. Oh some man, love, will ya? <laughs> okay, I guess I finally will after you say it for the thirteenth thousand. Actually, the twentieth time, considering this is episode number twenty. This is. Uh, can we just celebrate that for a second? <laughs> yeah. This is episode number. Hey, 20. that's why I'm cracking. I cracked open a cold one because this is a celebration. Yeah, we made Cheers. it twenty episodes, and it's gonna be a year in December. Oh really? Wow. We're nine months into Jeez. this thing, and twenty. You know, nine months of 20 episodes. We have definitely not been regular with producing content on this channel. We're going to get better. (laughs) We are going to get better. We're going to get better without this. But there's a lot going on in ham radio, and we thought, we thought we'd talk about it a little bit. Um, But, you know, as they do on CBS, whatever. And now for the current news of the world. Yeah, even in the last uh, Um, week or week and a half or whatever, how long it's been since the last, there's been still, like, even more stuff. We're going to talk about some of the old stuff and kind of bring up some more details, and then new stuff is, you know, coming around, too. So you've heard forever on the show, Sterling rambling on about Yota, Youngsters on the Air. That's a um, Region 1, I-A-R-U, I-T-U, I-T-U, I-A-R-U, International uh, Amateur Radio yeah, Union. Radio Union, not in- International Telecommunications <laughs> yeah. Union. I was right the first time. Close, close. I'm sorry. It's also an ITU Region 1, mm-hmm. though. Isn't I, it? I don't know ITU yeah. regions off the top of my head. We're in Region Anyways. Two. Um, anyways, Yoda is currently going on in the UK, um, which we've kind of talked about it before, but this year it's in the UK and it's a pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, and you can kind of blame this podcast for, for Yoda 2016 when I went to, me and Sam Rose, KC2LRC, were the first two Americans to go to the Yoda camp in Austria, uh, Wagner in Austria. And th- I think we talked about that in a, many episodes prior. Yeah. Um, and from that, we were trying to launch the podcast before you went. True, it just didn't happen. And but from that, gave me the inspiration to finally just go and do it. And it's giving right now about eighty kids or ninety. It's a it's a huge number. Last year it was uh, like I think like around a hundred, and this year it was eighty just because they didn't have the room in uh, what was it? Uh, it's a it's a park in northern London. It's called uh, Gilwell Park, and that's in northern. It's just north of uh, of London in the UK. Gilwell Park is a like a scouting camp, so it's you know a huge. It's a great venue for a lot of people, um, and they also get to do a lot of really cool things around the UK. There's like a lot of radio history that, that happened there uh, as well. So they're pretty much doing the same kind of kind of it's the same kind of idea as 2016 uh, Austria in ISS contact. They have a special event uh, GB17 YOTA GB17 Yankee Oscar Tango Alpha. Um, I don't know what their contact score is right now, but uh, I'm sure it's quite a bit, quite pretty, pretty high. Um, and they build stuff, they make stuff, they take home the antennas. And I guess something kind of cool. And I heard this on the ICQ podcast. And, and by the way, give a shout out to the ICQ podcast guys who are from the UK and they do a, a monthly or is it weekly, a fortnightly biweekly. That's it. Um, round table discussion. And this last week, one week's one was the, about Yoda and they interviewed some kids there and they talked about, and I heard from them since it's 2017, they're focusing on 17 meters, which is pretty cool. So they're making 17 meter antennas and, uh, uh doing like QRP operating and that sort of stuff. So yeah. So cool. if you want to find out more info, rsgb.org, rsgb.org slash main, M-A-I-N slash about dash us slash yota dash 2017 and if you want to see their daily videos you can go to youtube.com slash user slash the rsgb one word the rsgb all this will be in the links down in that uh, description down there (laughs) i was gonna say if you don't want to sit there and replay it and try to get the website right just click it on in the show notes yeah i believe icq um put out and uh, a show with some interviews in it from Yota. Yeah, just the just the most recent one. I don't know what episode it is, but uh, 
you'll we'll put that down below too. Yeah. So that's really cool, and uh, I, I I I'm really like happy for them. There, they, everybody there seems really like they're everybody's having like a, a hoot, and I and I'm really jealous. I couldn't go, but uh, this year they invited the Japanese. Last year they had Americans, and this year they had Japanese. And um, as kind of alluded to in the ICQ podcast episode, there's a lot of interest to get Yoda going up here in the U.S. And um, yes, uh, Sterling will get married. Yeah, once I as soon as I get married and get some things in my life kind of sorted out. Then I'll uh, you know start Yoda. <laughs> Actually, it's not all on me. You know, it's 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 a it's it's a huge event, and it requires a lot of coordination, a lot of support, a lot of sponsorship. It's, 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 it's tens of people. It's so, not ten people. It's not one person. Yeah, and, tens. And of even people. even when they were starting, so Lisa Lind- Linders, Linders. I'm sorry, I'm messing up your name. Pa two LS from the Netherlands. Or um, yeah, she um, she helped start it, and she had a group of like twenty people, twenty six uh, young people, who were the IRU Region Two uh, Youth Committee. So they were in charge of like coming up with cool youth things so they made this camp they made december a contesting month they made uh basically if you've heard of um uh the youth dx association has like this thing where they send uh uh youngsters to costa rica or aruba for like a on on their event to become the dx they do a very similar thing they have kids go to super stations like 403 alpha uh which by the way we should talk about in, in a minute they had a they had a fire I believe, but we'll talk about that in a second. And uh, other massive contest stations, and they get on the air for a big contest uh, and have a lot of fun being the mega station. So that's really cool. And and everybody there, most most of them are hams. Like that's what's interesting is like most of these Yoda participants are already hams, except for a handful, um, yeah, a very small handful. And and if you're not, you they do license testing. Uh, last year they did testing for the U.S. license. Um, so I think six or seven people got a U.S. license, uh, or maybe more. This year they're doing testing for the uh, U.K. license. So now um, a lot of these youngsters are getting a, a M0 or a 2E0 or a, I forget the you know all the call signs there uh, for a license in the U.K. So that's really cool. Yeah, um, that's going on. So check out the YouTube channel. They have live videos sometimes, but every day they come out with a, a new video that kind of goes over the synopsis, what happened during the last day. Um, yeah. And at the end of the, end of the right. whole thing, they'll have like a big uh, highlights reel, which is really cool. So Yeah, so let's just touch back on uh, the 403A story um, because I happen to know a little bit about this. Yeah, it sounds really so sad. So 403A is um, Ronco, Ranko, I uh, a station and it's on the top of a big mountain and I actually have some friends who've been there my friend uh, Fred K1VR has been there I believe and my friend Rich K1CC has been there and he has these towers some of which are for him some of which are in, uh, which are commercial on this mountaintop right um, and even as a helicopter he flies from his house up there mm. or you can drive you drive part of the way up the mountain then you park and then a military jeep will come pick you up and drive you to the top. Oh um, he actually shares the mountain with a uh, military installation. Oh wow! And I believe he has the um, land from the military. That's that's um, the definition so, of a like a mega station. <laughs> so it's on. Wow. It's it's very interesting. You'll it's it's very interesting for things like because he's on a hilltop for his big guide rotated towers. Uh, what he actually has is towers, and then he has guy towers because if not, the guys would be in a lake miles miles away. Because of the sloping terrain. Um, they're like 30 foot towers or whatever. That guy, the big towers. Um, and uh, he has lots and lots of antennas. It's a big contest station. So anyways, last December, almost a year ago, there was a huge storm. And I think most of the antennas were destroyed there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then those were supposed to, to um, come down like this week or so. Um, but last month, there was a big fire in that whole um, peninsula region where the station is. Um, and there was uh, some big uh, uh, forest fires there um, from the big hot weather. Um, and the station's really in grave danger. It's on a big mountain. Um, so, unfortunately, the station was saved. But all the antennas and control boxes and cable and coax um, was destroyed in the fire, which is kind of an expensive, sad thing. And yeah. so far, estimates say it's going to be like 20 k um, to replace it all. Yeah. So, the current thoughts say they're not going to even have it um working um until maybe late next summer or later um but it's really tragic and i feel bad for ronco who's also quite busy with um his company uh 403a um with and he has a relationship with flex and he's working on the flex pgxl amplifier and uh, he has his whole land of genius products antenna switches filters triplexers all those things um, and it's really sad to see a um a uh, friend uh, a, f- a friend of ham radio have uh, issues like this and um 
the fire didn't burn down the building, but it went all over his property, like 30 feet from the house, I believe. Yeah. Um, and they've I mean, been using airplanes to keep it out and whatnot, but it's really tragic. I'll, I'll attach a picture um, that I have of the station, but what looks like um, just pillars of smoke coming. Yeah. And then and, uh, uh, Ham Yoda. It's pretty sad. So I learned about that initially because they were going to have the youth contesting uh, program, the YCP at 403A, and I had to cancel that. Um, and that's not till, you know, like later this year. So, um, definitely, definitely really sad thing. It reminds me of the fire we had at W0 Tripoli. We were really fortunate enough to not have any antenna damage that we know of, but we, you know, couldn't get into the, you know, shack for a couple of months, but it's, it's a really... Is the really, shack back? What's yeah, going on there? Oh man, W0 Tripoli update coming right up. Um, not to, not to like downplay the, the 403 alpha, uh, tragedy, but, uh, W0 Tripoli, Tripoli has been really, really, really good. They've not really been uh, too busy on the social media side because they're so busy, like, you know, doing stuff. Um, I mean, I think last we talked, they got a FT or TS 990. They got a, uh, um, they sold their Flex 5000. They got a, another $2,000 radio. I forget what it was um, from Ike. No, wait, what is it? Uh, but anyway, and, they're, and right now they're going through the process of procuring new antennas, new coax, new polyphasers, Maybe even, you know, repair some parts of the tower. And they're really trying to investigate, you know, um, doing something to the tower that makes it easier to um, work on the antennas that are on the top. Because right now you have to get a tower climber who's insured for way more money than I'll ever make in my entire life. Um, and you have like a $2 million liability yeah, policy. And I think something. they even bumped it up with a $4 million. Like, it's it's crazy. But, uh, you know, it's they're really like pushing forward for, with it. And, and uh, you know, they're having a lot of fun, I think. So I've been graduated for almost a year, about two and a half years now. So I'm slowly kind of fading away from the the uh, the spot, not the spotlight, but the the loop. But I, every time I see you know checking with them, it's like, oh, we got this new radio. We got 17 new members. We licensed, you know, they they've been doing licensing classes and they've been really successful at it. Uh, they've been doing, you know, a lot of them have been there over the summer. They did field day there. Um, they set up a antenna in the part or in the uh, like courtyard between the mechanical engineering building and the nuclear engineering building. I think, um, and yeah, they're having a lot of fun. So real yeah, jealous. That, that's super cool. But, um, that reminds me before, before, while we're still on off topic, um, last week I spent the week at, um, WPI. Um, and, uh, I was doing, I was taking some classes there for a the week. I actually lived in a dorm. Um, it was pretty cool. Wow. Um, you know, eat the crappy again? dining you're hall food. 15? Almost 16. Almost 16. 15, almost and you're 16. already going to college. Wow, look at you. <laughs> already going to college. <laughs> uh, but I took some uh, computer science classes while I was there. Um, and when I when you go to WPI, one of the things, so what is WPI? Worcester Polytech Institute. Um, that's English for big engi- a tiny engineering school with lots of geeks. Um, <laughs> and it's a, I would say it's a decently well-known known engineering school. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's very very prestigious in, in engineering. It's up there with you know MIT and uh, Ro- yeah. or Rochester Poly. Well, yeah, it's it's more common anything that has Rochester, Poly yeah. Polytechnic like Cal Poly or Worcester or Worcester. We're talking about that. Um, Rochester, uh, you know, yeah, it's Worcester. When you cross Worcester and Rochester, you get Worcester. <laughs> Worcester. <laughs> yep. Um, but it's a it's I would say it's a solid, um, solid uh, engineering school. Um, you know. Good double E programs, good CS programs, good yeah, good all around mechanical engineering problems, uh, <laughs> problems <laughs> programs, um, and generally just like an all around good place. Anyways, when I was there, one of the first things you notice when you were driving through um, downtown Worcester, where WPI is located, obviously the W is Worcester, um, is you see three towers. You can see them probably from four or five miles away, um, and there, the ham radio club there, which is Whiskey One Yankee Kilo, W1YK, W1, what was the phonetics? Yiddish Kiddish for uh, <laughs> you Jews out there. Um, so they have a nice club station, a very active club. Um, the guy who I toured with there, AG, uh, I forget his call, um, K3, I want to say um, CCG, um, but don't quote clo- clo- quote me on that anyways he was a uh, member he's the vice president of the club and um he a k3 agg okay that was pretty close ag um is his name i believe it's andrew and his last name because with g but he goes by ag um he was the vice president of the club and i emailed the club reflector and i said you know i'm gonna be in town for a week can anybody show me around the station i might apply here one day <laughs> i'd really like to see it and they pulled out all the stops really i got to go to the club station i played with the radios we saw the towers 
They have a very nice club station. I yeah. gotta say, they have a. I am. They have a uh, what? I am very jealous. Like I saw the picture you had with the three towers, and I was like, man, I only had one tower. So they have. They have <laughs> inside the shack. They have a Yeezy F two one thousand. You know, not an icon, but it's a good enough radio. Yeah, they're the, the um, same one I blew up. You know, when I went yeah, to you blew up one of those. <laughs> um, uh, there is a flex radio. Um, they have an ICOM 90, 9, 910 for satellite work. They have a full satellite array on the roof. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, another, it's, it's, they have a, uh, you know, two Yaggies on an SL tower with computer control and all that for satellites. But it was funny when I was walking around campus on the next building over, there was another satellite station which looked identical. And I asked all the hands there, and they said, Do you know what this is? And they say, No. So I figure it's for some, you know, CubeSat or something like that. Yeah. Um, Anyways, they have two HF towers. One's Rhone 45, one's Rhone 25. And they have five element Yagis on 10, 15, and 20, monobanders. And on 40, they have a two element Yagi. Um, so it's a very nice station. Wow. And, and uh, on another tower, on, on another building, they have a repeater tower with two repeaters on site and another repeater off site. And they, I was told they get 10 to 15 students at every, all of their meetings, which sounded pretty dang good for a college uh, club. Yeah. I was impressed. We we only get that maybe one or tw- once or twice a year. Only if we said free pizza, and that yeah. that would bring P- free pizza. Will pizza would bring anybody, everybody. Yeah. yeah, even if they yeah. didn't have a clue what ham radio was, it's like oh, there's pizza. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, people like pizza. College students who don't want to eat the college cafeteria food really like pizza. Mm-hmm. So yeah, with all this talk about colleges and ham radio, I'll just give another quick shout out to Facebook's, uh, the AWRL uh, Collegiate Amateur Initiative. It's a Facebook thing. If you go to facebook.com slash groups slash A-R-R-L-C-A-R-I or go to the show notes and look at a link, um, that's where everybody's figuring out how to do ham radio in college. So I know that's where you, I think you posted in there. Um, yeah, I posted, hey guys. And, and you know got anybody. quite a response. So if you're at a college, a response. please get on uh, the Facebooks. Well, you don't have to, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do recommend because that's where everybody's at. Anyway, anyways, I had a lot of fun uh, at WPIWI. Uh, that's Worcester Polytech, wire, uh, Worcester Polytech Wireless, um, not Wireless Institute. I forget what the I is. Uh, uh, WPIWI. Um, but uh, that's their wireless club on campus, and it was a lot of fun to be there. Cool. Hey, this is N0SSC. Thanks for listening to the Phasing Line podcast. This podcast is uh, brought to you by you um, because you guys donate to us on patreon.com slash the Phasing Line podcast and to the PayPal, which you can find on our website at thephasinglinepodcast.com. All of the proceeds go to our editing software, our hosting, our, you know, everything that we need to put a podcast together. No profit to us. We're actually, you know, always running um, in the red, but we'd always appreciate if you'd like to help us out. Check out how to donate at phasinglinepodcast.com slash donate. Hey, welcome back to the Phasing Line Podcast. This is N0SSC. And I'm Marty Sullaway, KC1CWF. And uh, so on this last break, we had a, I had, not you, because teleportation has has not been invented yet, but Justin makes, Justin bakes stuff for fun. Justin Sterling's fiance. Yeah. She, her hobby is baking and also watching The Bachelorette and The Bachelor which is what she's doing now, which you may hear in the background, but that's why I got this dynamic microphone. Anyway, 15 tangents right there. She brought me bat- brownie batter, and it was so good. It was so good. In fact, I think we're going to have her on this podcast, this one right here. She's not a ham, but we're going to have her on this podcast and talk about her baking creations. I'm not trying to rip off of Linux in the Ham Shack. Let's put that out there, because I know they do that with Cheryl, and it's really great. Um... But I've also listened to another podcast, which they review cookies that listeners send in. So I think we should have a little recipe corner and a review corner of Justin's baked delicacies. What do you think of that? Let's see what the audience has to say. I think it'll be cool. Hopefully, uh, you know, Rich or uh, Russ or Cheryl email me and say, hey, no, don't do that. We have the you know copyright on that. Just kidding. I'm sure they won't because they don't have they're, a copyright. They're pretty nice. Hey. They, were, yeah. they were very nice. They came up that'll to be, me Dayton I mean, yeah, that would be really fun. I mean, yep. yeah. So um, let's get back on topic. Marty, uh, how's how's royalty being young ham of the year, Mr. King Marty? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I bow down to you, uh, God Sterling there. Um, I'm not royalty. I'm <laughs> oh, man. very, very, heads, very honored. I don't know who though. to bow to. Very, 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 very honored. Oh. And uh, I'm excited to go to Huntsville next week just to show my dedication. I have a wedding to go to on Sunday. 
So I just read <laughs> Sterling my um, transportation plan, but I'll read it to you um, just because it's funny, I think. On uh, Friday, I go Boston to Cleveland to Birmingham to Huntsville. <laughs> um, and on Saturday, I go to Huntsville to Nashville to New York City. Oh and on gosh. Sunday, I go New York City to Boston. Oh. So let's just count all the stops there. Boston, Cleveland, Birmingham, Huntsville, Huntsville, Nashville, Ugh. Boston. Oh, that hurts, man. That's seven. That's seven so stops. Trouble. But I'm very, very because honored Because you have a excited. wedding on Sunday. Well, you know what's really sad? I have a wedding on Saturday. And I can't go Sterling's to not going to be there. But you know what? Yeah. You'll be there in went, all of our hearts. I did go last year, and uh, and I saw Skyler receive his uh, Young Ham of the Year award um, in person and in color. But uh, this year, I will be attending remotely if they have a live stream. I, yeah, I think Tom, I'm KUB. supposed to tell people. Um, that's actually something good to point out. Yeah. Um, Tom Medlin, um, W5KUB, um, will be live streaming that. And uh, I'll actually be on a show, Amateur Video now, Roundtable, tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And I believe also on Ham Nation tomorrow night. That's the 14th, uh, the oh 15th and 16th. And I believe today the rain report, that's T H E R A I N R E P O R T, came out uh, with an interview we did. So um, I guess uh, lots of ham radio media. Yeah, you're well, real popular. Man, you said ham nation. Let me write this down in the show notes. We're going to give you uh, links to all these things so you can see Marty and all his glory. Yeah, we, in, wanna, uh, we also want to uh, just tell everybody about all the other ham radio medias because it's not just us. Yeah. I know right now I have a list on my website, in 0 com of all of the podcasts that have passed my muster, which is basically every podcast and media and YouTube channel that I have come across, which is almost every every one of them. Um, and if you ever have, I'll, I'll move that over to our, our website. Uh, and if you ever have any um, podcast or media outlet or creator, content creator that isn't popular yet, or you just, you know, uh, now know them or they just started, or you just started, if you're starting a podcast, let us know, and we'll put it on our links just page. Just because we'll it's not currently on our page right now, it does not mean we don't like it. It just means that we haven't seen it yet. Right. So we'll put it there, and it'll... Because this hobby is... We're all together. There's no drama. I mean, there is drama. There's always drama and everything. We're, we're humans, for goodness sakes. Yeah. But, you know, we're we're brothers in, uh, and sisters in, in a common interest. So... We got to give our, you know, shout outs to everybody out there. Yeah. I think hopefully part, of, do the same. part of this ham media, especially ham radio media, I think is, you know, let's spread the word about everybody and let's, you know, let's all collaborate um, about everything we do. So everybody can do, um, every, everybody can get their message out even farther. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It, it helps. Great. It helps everybody. Benefits everybody. Hurts no nobody, hopefully. Um, but yeah. So anyway, Yodi. Um, <laughs> don't call it Yodi, by the way. Yeah, it's Young Ham. Actually, you give me the, because you know the full phrase, the full, I, what is it? Uh, the full thing is the Bill Pasternak W-A-6-I-T-F um, 2017 Young Ham of the Year. Um, and I'm so deeply, deeply, deeply honored. <laughs> How deeply grateful um, are you? I'm, I'm so, this, you know, uh, it's, it's really, it's, I, I think about um, Bill, you know, um, you know, if well, if Bill were here, um, mm -hmm. you know, and just reflecting on He'd what a great proud. man he was. Me, He'd he definitely would be proud of me. He'd be like, <laughs> oh, crap, this organization so has been corrupted. Mar Marty's being chosen. Uh, but I'm so honored. <laughs> Absolutely. So, 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 so honored. So give, uh, give the Amateur Radio Newsline some love because without them this uh, and without Bill. And it costs um, them money to do it. So This wouldn't be a yeah. thing. So ARnewsline.org, everybody gets their news, uh, Amateur Radio News from there, hopefully. I they are the first. Love. You know how CW is the first digital mode? Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh AR Newsline is the first. ARnewsline.org, click the PayPal button. You know, give them, you know, think about how expensive it is to do what they do on a much bigger yeah. scale than we do it. So I think. And know, they don't even bother you as much as we do. And honestly, I don't know why people listen to us talk about, oh, get Patreon link, donate. We're dying. We are but losing money, though. So you should. Yeah, we, we always, we always run money. a negative. We always run a deficit. But, you know, I, we love I you. We love income. you. We love you. And uh, Marty makes an even better income. So that's not yeah. true. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, we'll see you in Huntsville. Hope to see all I of won't. you in Huntsville. I'll, I'll be there. On, uh, I'll be there. W5 KUB's live yeah. stream. KUB will be live streaming it if you can't see it. Sterling has a YouTube channel, by the way, and uh, he oh, posted yeah. a video the other day. I think it's worth discussing. It's, yeah. I, I, so I got real tired of not making YouTube videos, and I bought a microphone because 
I live in an apartment with very echoey walls and the ceilings are open. And at this, like I said earlier, Justin is watching The Bachelorette or The Bachelor, whatever. And she was cooking brownies earlier. So there's a lot of noise that goes on and a dynamic microphone is a lot more or less sensitive to outside noise. So you have to kind of talk right up on it to really get it. But if you kind of go far away, it doesn't sound very, you know, it sounds very close. So a dynamic mic is like less sensitive to the outside noises. And I don't want to like put like foam on my walls yet. I'm still I mean, building my office up. I wouldn't say it's less sensitive. You just... You're, you were using an omnidirectional mic, and now you're using a right. very directional microphone. A yeah, unidirectional, or a, dy- and, or a cardioid, actually. Yeah, as opposed to the MXL 990, which I have, which is a, uh, uh, what was it, condenser microphone, which is very sensitive to, like, the slightest pin drop. You, If you crank the gain up on a condenser, you can, you can uh, peak it just with the ambient noise, and you would hear Justin's TV, you would hear the cat's meowing, you'd hear... You do that with any microphone. ...a so. mixer going... But with a dynamic, it's not like, well, with my setup, with my preamp and my little cheap amp or cheap uh, mixer, it's not going to really pick up those things. So it helps because then I can get up close and personal. You can not hear the echoes in my room and whatever. Anyway, I digress. I made a YouTube channel comparing the two microphones plus a webcam microphone. And it wasn't a really good comparison, but I noticed a lot of people who do compare mics on YouTube, they're just like, they spend 15 minutes talking about what microphones are just like I did. And they don't go like, here's one, here's two, here's three, here's two, here's one, here's three, here's two, and just like go back and forth between them. So I kind of did that to get a really like apples to oranges comparison without talking like for five days about like, well, this one is a, you know, cardioid pattern condenser microphone and it costs $300 and I put my face up on it right here and you can hear me. You know what I mean? So yeah, go check out my YouTube channel. I really, I'm going to go get a new camera because mine broke and my both of mine are broken actually um, and start doing some stuff. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, but yeah, I got that out there. I have a lot of, you know, still a lot of good videos about satellite operating and uh, hunting DX and, you know, setting microphone levels. So youtube.com slash C slash N zero SSC. Go to the show notes and you'll find it. Oh, I was going to mention, I got an email today um, that the IC7610, which I thought was going to ship in August, um, might slip closer to October now, but we'll keep following that. That's the new ICOM fancy radio, the 7600 it replacement. It's That's a so fancy. SDR with two independent receivers. It's going to be a fantastic radio. I'm very oh, excited. It's like the, it's like the, uh, what is it? It's like the 7300. Yeah, with- think like two 7300s in a box with a better receiver. With uh, RX in and RX out and a transverter output and a 10 megahertz sync input and just lots of good stuff. Do they have a price on that thing? Jeez. Uh, three grand or so. <laughs> Which is actually a very reasonable price for the futures. It's a yeah. very reasonable price. A very, it's a I, steal. I mean, you look at the you know, ham radio economy and the way things are going for like technology, you would think that these things would be like... Like the IC7300 was... It's it's not I wouldn't say it's ahead of its time, but it in ham radio speak, it is like it's what we should have had in two thousand and ten. But we have it now and everybody thought it was gonna cost like five thousand dollars to get a band scope on the screen that would update like live thirty frames a second or whatever, hundred twenty frames a second, instead of like this little black dot that sweeps across the screen like ten times a second and it looks, you know, dumb. They're here now and they're actually really, really affordable. IC seventy three hundred was what, twelve hundred dollars? Um and then the seventy six hundred, which is like the step up. 7610, which is the, you know, new one coming soon is a step up at 3000 Then the 7700, the 7851, which you basically are putting a second mortgage on your house to buy. Um, I would not recommend doing that unless you're, I don't, I, I disagree. I think money. it's a great value. Um, well, the, the expensive for rigs, the thing what I'm trying to say is if you're getting into hand radio, don't, don't think you don't need a 7851. Don't start with a 7851. Don't even, th- you know, consider not even starting with 70, 7300 because right now the Yesu uh, FT450 is probably, or the T, uh, the 718. I think the 450 is a lot better because of the internal DSP, IF DSP. I'd check and out it's the like 718. A, it's a cute little radio. Um, but, you know, there's well, the point of the matter here is get comfy and then figure out what you're going to need to suit your DSPs. Maybe you're fine. You're going to find you're not an HF, or maybe you find you want to play with the satellites. Investing a lot of radio gear really quickly is not going to be the way to go. Think of like easy things you can do with radio. Um, did you know that FT8 crashed PSK reporter the other day? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's, I saw it on, um, I think it was some lift serve and then I saw it on Reddit and then I went to PSK reporting and it was just down. And then the guy who actually runs it, a guy named Philip, I think it's Goldstone or gold something. I don't know his call sign off the top of my head. Um, he, I, I don't think anybody mentioned that it was FT8, but I think this is the, we'll just speculate for a minute. FT8 came on the air and then PSK reporter 
went off the air. The servers got out overloaded and um um he I guess he runs a server like out of his own pocket. So, you know, once you know, there's a lot of spots coming in, it can overload it. And it might even be a DDoS. I don't actually know like a direct denial of service where a lot of harmful pingers are like causing havoc to the server. I don't know what really happened, but FTA killed the PSK reporter. I'll I'll stick with it until, you know, proven otherwise. Uh, I really hope it comes back. And uh, lately on the the PSK reporter Google group, there's been a call for like, you know, opening up a PayPal account for that. So I don't know if Philip will do that. I'm sh- he's doing it out of the kindness of his own heart. Um, throwing money at a problem is, you know, always a good solution. Some, well, not always, but uh, it would definitely help in his case, get more server space, get faster servers, be able to expand it better, you know, have have stuff. But then he can't just do that all by himself. He would need like a lot more developers. So... But, you know, Hammer is really interesting in that way, in this way, because you have one person who develops a really great product and it's just that one person and like a million people going to be like, oh, add this, add this, add this. And they just keep adding new things without any compensation. It's just for fun. It's what they do. Think of APRS.fi. Think of APRS itself. Bob Bruniga, Bruniga, sorry, WB4 APR. I created the APRS spec and right now it's, you know, being developed on um, mostly by him. And then, oh, what else? Um, DX Summit, DX uh, Atlas, the William Hepper propagation reports. You know, every, all of these things are free. Mm, um, yeah. Ham, and those uh, are good people. And they're really cool. Yeah. I just yeah, wish yeah. that, I just wish that, you know, more things were on GitHub, more things were open sourced because if they were, you would have these things, you know, well, I, I don't know. Maybe this is a fallacy, but I feel like if you put the lake, put the water, you know, you can't drag a horse to, to water. You can't force a horse to drink. But if you put the put a bowl out in the field, a horse will come and drink. I feel like if you put the source and put the you know code and, and all the materials needed to develop on a project like PSK Reporter or WhisperNet or whatever, and a lot of things are, so don't get me wrong, um, then it would make the economy a lot better and it would help like, it would help people like me who want to learn how to code and want to help like, not people, not people like me, because I don't know how to code, but people who know how to code help the hobby even further. If you go to GitHub and you tap into Ham Radio, there's a million, millions and millions of things, but the big things, I always notice they're pretty close source. It's pretty, you know, it's a bummer, but that's just my rant for the for the podcast. You can cut it out if you want, but, but that's just how I feel. Yep. Well, that like derailed. But yeah, we were talking about FT8. Um, it killed the radio star, as you were singing earlier. FT8 killed the radio star. <laughs> and to um, all those who don't get it. You know, Spurious Submissions Band started it. I made a new song, FT8 Kill the Radio Star. Why did the FT8, why did FT8 kill the radio star, Marty? Marty? I don't know. I think FT8 was a combination of weak signal that everybody liked out of JT65, speed more comparable to PSK, simplicity that's more like contesting that everybody wanted in a compact package that's easy to use. Yeah. And so by that logic, it made radio really easy and it's making like context just, just super easy. And we talked about this last week about like the implications or the, the potential implications of like botting. Like you could literally make a, make a Python script that would just make context all day, um, which is good and bad. A lot of people would not like that, but people like me would be like, hmm, you know, automated, you know, propagation beaconing, but that's whisper, you know, that sort of stuff already. Yep. It's fun to talk about. That's what we have this podcast here for. It's, it's a rambling show. And, it's a rambling you know, Stuff show. to ramble about. Um, but that's about it. You know, and... Uh, <laughs> and that's all that's to that. And that's all for the Facing Glide podcast. And that's how the cookie crumbles. All right. Well, uh, I think we've given you a lot of great info here. Remember, go check out that Yoda page. It's in those show notes. Huntsville next weekend. Young Ham of the Year Award. I'm super honored. You mean this honored. weekend? Yeah, this coming 18th weekend. 18th to 19th. This coming weekend, 18th to 19th. Sterling has a YouTube channel. 2017. So if you're listening to this, the eclipse is on Monday. H A M S C I dot org. Don't forget to join the solar eclipse. Uh, QSO party. Yep. Ham side dot org. to the eclipse at ham dot org slash S E Q P rules. Link in the show notes. And most of all, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time here on the facing line. 73. Bye bye for now. Is that brownie mix? Can I have some?